I just bought a $3,500 monitor. Let's see if it was worth it. So this just came in today. This is the Flanders Scientific DM160 production monitor. We're gonna do an unboxing and see what's inside. So I got this monitor off Black Friday for $3,500. And I also wanted to get some accessories, so the total purchase price for this whole thing was $4,300. Now, I know that seems like a steep price, but I have my reasons for getting this monitor. So just right off the bat, the case looks super nice. It has the FSI Flanders Scientific Incorporated logo. So let's open this bad boy up. Looks like it starts with the start quick start guide for the DM160 and the DM220, which are both OLED monitors. So it's going through, pretty much has everything about just the basics. There's a lot more in-depth features of the monitor. Um, I will have to familiarize myself with them though. So the monitor itself is covered at the moment. So here we are. And just from holding the monitor, it looks like they already screwed in the multi-functional receiver plate, which was an additional accessory. So that's actually pretty nice, honestly. And the fact that it fits in here too with that, as well as the other accessories is pretty nice. So let's go ahead and take it off. So here's the monitor. Ooh, it, it looks so nice. I could tell already just by touching the monitor itself that is really high quality. So here's the Flanders Scientific DM160. It is a 16 inch OLED monitor. Whoa, yeah, dang, that feels like. So the monitor has <laughs> the, multi, the multi-functional receiver plate right here. It's already screwed in for me. It comes with all of the ports that I might need. And then here we have the gold mount plate so we can power it without having to use a cord. Here we have some cables. So here's some of the stuff that's inside. This is just about connecting and disconnecting BNC cables and then as well as some other warranty information. Looks like we have the power cable as well as the power cable for the gold mount battery plate. I think this is USB to Thunderbolt. I could be wrong. USB to Thunderbolt maybe, but I'll have to look it up. So now we're gonna power it up and make sure it works. If you don't know already, the proper practice for plugging in an SDI cable goes as follows. Make sure your power sources are turned on. So we wanna make sure the monitor is plugged in and turned on. The second thing that you wanna make sure that is on is your camera. So we have our camera on, we have our monitor on. The next step is then to plug in the SDI cable. To be honest, this is something that's relatively new to me. It was brought to my attention that this is the way that you should be plugging in your SDI cables. I've been primarily working with 3G cables and so apparently the risk of burning an SDI port isn't as high, but especially when working with 12G cables, this risk can be much higher. And so 
it's best just to follow this standard practice when plugging in your SDI cables. If you want to learn more about that, check out RED or Ari's website for more information on properly plugging in your SDIs. So why did I buy a $4,300 monitor package? So how I came upon this monitor was that I actually purchased two monitors before this. They were in the realm of $500 to $2,500 price point. Well, the first monitor that I got had a green tint to it. I didn't want to have to worry about trying to calibrate it, especially when I'm already spending that much. I also didn't want to have to try to correct for it with a LUT. I just felt like if I was spending that much money, it just wasn't worth it. So I returned that one. Well, I ended up getting a cheaper monitor because it had really good reviews. It also had a great feature set. And so I ordered that monitor and as luck would also have it, it wasn't working. The main menu screen was working, but all the inputs and outputs, everything about it was just defective. I had a flickering screen. We tried different cables. We tried different cameras and it just wasn't working. So I returned that one. I'll go ahead and purchase this monitor. It's going to probably last me years. And Flanders also has a service where you can send it in and they can color calibrate it just to make sure that all the colors are right. And there was a whole bunch of other features that I felt would be really useful for my production workflows. And so that's how I ended up buying this. Well, could I have rented this monitor? Well, sure. But I also wanted to make sure that I had a monitor at home that I could pull out whenever I want in order to get a reliable image, especially when I'm practicing lighting setups with my brother. And so I felt like that was another good reason to get this. Another reason that I felt like this would be a good buy would also be for when I color grade my projects. A lot of the projects that I do, I may not always edit them, but I like to make sure that the color looks right. And so I currently have an LG TV that I use for reference, but it doesn't hurt to have something that's really high quality, that's probably gonna be way more accurate in color. I was also looking for another monitor that we could use to pull focus from whenever we wanna do first AC work. We wanted something that wasn't too small, but something that wasn't too big that we couldn't make it portable. And so I felt like this 16 inch area was just the right size for first AC work and also as a general reference for when we're shooting. A lot of people who are starting out in the industry don't necessarily have access to a lot of this higher end equipment. And so my goal is to also share some of the stuff that they might not see every day so that one day when they're able to actually use it, they might have a better idea of what they're working with. So I just got this monitor today, so I haven't had a lot of time to mess around with it. This is actually maybe my second time using a Flanders Scientific monitor. And now that I have my own, I'll really be able to dive into it and see what features I can get from it. So once I've spent some more time with this monitor, I'll do a follow-up video on some of the features, as well as a review and my thoughts on this purchase.